Community cohesion is really important to me in the work that I do in the department because it's really about bringing people together, um, whatever their age, their race, their religion, and trying to really build on the shared values that people have rather than concentrating on the differences between people. Everybody knows if they live in a place where they feel comfortable, they feel at home, they know their neighbours, they feel that they share very much the same values as the people around them. Um, but at the same time, being able to celebrate the things that make them unique and different. And I think that community cohesion, particularly in a time of great change, um, is, is something that's really precious to us and absolutely essential to building the kind of communities that we all want to see. To me, community cohesion is about building community relationships. It's about building people. And if you have those kind of quality relationships, then the community will work. I think it's um, everybody in a place, and place can be you know, your street or wider, having a shared understanding um, of each other and each other's differences and accepting them and a shared sense of belonging to a place. Like sometimes you have like in certain areas where even neighbours they don't really mix that much and that might be due to cultural differences and things like that and it's just I think the whole point of community cohesion is to sort of build relationships through understanding, through dialogue and through sort of getting to know each other. That's what I think community cohesion is about. In my day-to-day -day work, there are sort of three major stakeholders. There are the people who come, refugees, asylum seekers, migrants. There are those who try to facilitate their sort of um, integration. And then there is general public. For some people, community cohesion is about different ethnicities and how they get on together. A group that people often look at is refugees and they see the need for refugees to integrate into life with other Londoners. Well, we, we believe clearly people are the stakeholders ultimately. We're all stakeholders in, in our communities and we want that to uh, be clear that you must put, I think, the individuals at the forefront of cohesion and uh, their communities and help them to feel that they can actually have an influence in their communities. The push towards neighbourhood policing and community policing very much supports our agenda and that's there. I think health is incredibly difficult. Um, in some ways health is, you know, health should be the showcase of um, the health service should be the showcase of a cohesive community. There are two particular relationships between cohesion and housing. One is about um, public services and the other one is about the local neighbourhood you live in. If you live in public housing, social housing, in a London borough, I think there are two ways in which that public housing service, social housing service, might impact on your thoughts about cohesion one way or another and how cohesive you think your area is. One is your perception of how that social housing service, that local service is administered. And it might be your perceptions of fairness around the way it's administered, your perceptions of who's getting what. And I think the second way is because actually, when you're asked the question, do you think people in your area get on well together, what are you going to think about? You're going to think about those people who live around you, those people that what you see when you open the door, you're going to think about how well shared areas and common services are maintained by the, by the local council. You're going to think about who your neighbours are, how long they've lived there, how well you know them. And there are examples of very successful areas which have high levels of deprivation but also have high levels of cohesion. One of the problems we have is that different people have different understandings of community cohesion and as a result when the authorities, the government, local government, the various um, professionals approach the community, their understanding of what cohesion is is quite different from what the community sees. Last year we redid our community cohesion strategy um, but we were very clear that we had to use language that everybody understood. So our key words are fair, safe, respect and together. Because actually that's what the residents of Barking and Dagenham, that's the language they talk. Because to the community, it's about things that happen on the ground such as services. Services, relationships with the local authorities such as the housing department. If they feel misunderstood when they approach local services as far as they're concerned, 
no one understands me. Something like community cohesion is a principle that undergirds everything that we do. So it's not a bolt-on, it's not the responsibility of someone sitting in the centre. It's the responsibility of everybody who delivers services and also of all residents as well. Um, the bottom line on community cohesion is about personal relationships. And as I see it, there are four components. The first is to do with love, and that's called caring, really. Whether it's customer care or any other kind of care, you have to show people your care. The second is to do with trust. And if people don't trust you, they will not have faith in anything you say or anything you do. The third thing is to do with re respect. And we hear it all on the streets, you know, they disrespected me and that's the reason why they shot them or, or cut them or knife them. Well, in actual fact, respect is really about people feeling valued. And the last one is to do with understanding. People want to be understood and they want to understand. But if we spend time trying to understand people and deliver the services that they want, then what we will find is that we will get the cohesion that we're looking for because it's about relationship.